this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Kingston Fury Renegade, complete with heatsink. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to install the Renegade. And as an example, I'm using the NZXT N7Z690 motherboard. And this is a board that's capable of holding up to three PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. The good thing about these sorts of drives is they're really easy to install, and the installation process is really straightforward. I'm going to show you what to do, both in the hardware level, so what to do on the board itself and then what to do in Windows in order to get it to activate. So if you're having some problems where you can't get the drive to register then stick with me to the end to see the tips on that. Now I've done a video separately on the standard version of the Renegade drive but this is the one that comes with a heatsink which has some implications depending on which board you've purchased. You can see that this motherboard has some removable covers and shielding on the front of it that covers over the various different NVMe ports. Now it's worth noting that each motherboard you use may vary in terms of the performance that it delivers through those M2 ports. I've done a separate video on this that I'll link to in the description but you may find that you might not get the best speed unless you use the top port on the motherboard. You'll notice that this one on this motherboard has a better heatsink at the top there as well as standard. There are some other things of interest here too, which I'll get to in a second, but this drive will definitely look the best at the top, although it will be mounted upside down, as you'll see in a second. Now, obviously, the Fury Renegade with the heatsink delivers better performance because it has that cooling heatsink to keep it running cool and therefore optimum speeds. And this is the 4 terabyte version, but the installation process will be the same no matter what drive you have in terms of the size of the thing. But this is a little bit interesting because there are some implications because that heat sink basically means that on some motherboards you may not be able to reuse the housing which can have some implications in terms of trying to put things back together on this motherboard as well there are some different standoffs so it's worth keeping that in mind too you may have to adjust the standoff setup for the motherboard so as standard the setup here is usually pretty straightforward in that you plug in the drive as you'll see me do in a second and then screw it down but sometimes you have a standoff which is slightly different this one was a little bit too tall but there is an extra one included in the box for the motherboard board that you can see here is a smaller one that's basically a bit lower profile so you can use that one instead if you've got the right tool and by the way I'm using an iFixit screw kit here in case you're wondering that has the tool to install these standoffs with ease but you can see I've set it lower here and then it's easy to connect up so the installation is really easy you can see it's basically just plug it in and then screw it down. It's worth noting the screw isn't included with the drive that actually came with the motherboard. I'll leave links in the description so you can purchase additional screws if you need them, if you haven't got them with your motherboard, or if you've bought a pre-built machine that just doesn't have them. Now you can see that that heatsink is stopping me from putting the original shielding back on for this. Now it's not an issue because obviously it's going to be superior, the built-in shielding and sort of heat sink that you've got with the drive itself versus the motherboard, especially in this motherboard. But it does mean that there's a slightly different finish now because we can't have that white housing on the top. And also the drive is mounted upside down, which isn't ideal. Now going into Windows, and I'm going to show you the settings for doing this. You'll see that as standard, the drive isn't recognized. We've got two drives here. One is a crucial main drive and then the other one's an external drive. But if you go up to the computer and then click on management, it'll open up computer management and you'll see there's a setting for disk management there. You can also access this by hitting the start menu and then typing disk management and you'll see an option appears for create and manage hard drive partitions. Click on that and that will launch the disk management tool. This is the same in Windows 10 or 11. This is in Windows 10 for demonstration purposes but once you get in there you'll see the drive itself is grayed out has this black effect to it if you click on it and then click for new simple volume what you basically need to do is follow through the steps to format the drive and give it a volume label so i'm going to call it the fury renegade here for example click on that to finish and now the drive is formatted and looks the same as the other drives that are already there. You'll also get a notification from Windows that it's been recognized now, and then it will pop up within Explorer, so you can see it here, the full empty drive ready to go with all that wonderful extra fast storage. Now, in terms of fast storage, it is worth checking to make sure that it's running as at the speeds you're expecting. 
And to do this, I'd recommend using Crystal Disk Mark. This is a free tool that you can download. I'll link to in the description. And you can basically run several benchmark tests on this with relative ease. Just follow these steps to set it to nine passes, 64 gigabytes, and into the MVME mode, and then click Run. You can see Task Manager on the left here just to give a demo of what it's like. And then also I'm obviously setting it to the right drive. So I've labeled it E. So I'm going to use that and then just click on all to start running it. Let it run and it does take a while to go through, but this one is some fake tests about transferring files around in order to see what the speeds are. And you want to make sure obviously that you're getting the maximum speed. This is a Gen 4 drive and it's expensive for this size format as well. So you want to make sure that it is running as it should be. And you can see in the bottom of Task Manager that it's currently getting over 7 gigabytes a second in terms of the read speed about 7,000 megabytes a second. So it's actually doing what it should. If you find that it isn't getting these speeds, then it might be that you've installed it in the wrong place or that there's a BIOS setting that's causing problems. It's also worth noting if it doesn't register in Windows at all, if you can't get it to run in Windows, there could be a BIOS setting that's holding it back. So it's worth going into your BIOS, looking in there and playing around with those settings, trying to work out what the issue could be because there are some and it varies from BIOS to BIOS. Different motherboards have different settings, but sometimes some of the restrictive settings on there will stop drives from being recognized by Windows despite going through the steps I've shown you. Hopefully you found this video useful. Be sure to check out the other information in the description below to find out other things that might help. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.